Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I got another rant for you today. Today, I'm breaking this up into two parts. So bear with me on this one. Before we jump in, thank you to everyone for your continued support of our channel. We're about to cross over 3,900 subscribers. This is so freaking exciting. Our numbers are blowing up because of y'all. I'm going to make a point. I'm going to make a point. I'm going to be going live probably three times a week now, doing a Rudy's Rant for everyone, and I will be announcing it beforehand, so you'll have plenty of time and plenty of, uh, of, of advanced notice. But I will be jumping on doing some Rudy's Rants about probably three times a week live. Um, and let's have a good old time, man. But I'm doing this in a two-part situation right here. We're actually at 3,900 subscribers. We hit 3,900. Get us to 4,000, please, today. All right, let's jump in. I'm doing this in two parts. I'm repeating it for the fourth time. It's a Cheryl Swoops thing. Because I got one on the Nancy Lieberman comments about Cheryl Swoops. Seems like some people are, are, are teaming up to gang up on Cheryl Swoops. And it's not just the podcasters like myself and Ben and all the other guy, all the other podcasts that are taking their we're taking our swings because you know what? We don't like lying, we don't like fake, and we don't like fraud. And that's all of what Cheryl Swoops is: a lying fake fraud. But I'm gonna talk about in this particular video why Cheryl Swoops can't stand Kate with Caitlin Clark. Why do you think she can't stand Caitlyn Clark? Is it because she's white? I mean, Cheryl Sue says, you know, I grew up in a white neighborhood. All my teammates were white, blah, 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 blah. Is it because she's straight? Cheryl Sue has gone back and forth over the fence on that. First she was married, then she was not, and then she was dating women, then she was dating. She has no, I don't know what she's doing. I don't care. Or maybe it's just that Caitlyn Clark is just flat better than her and she cannot stand the thought of this lily white girl being so much better than her as a rookie that is why it bothers these old heads it bothers these viejitas in spanish old ladies it bothers them it just it, it 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 gnaws at them that there is someone like Caitlin Clark who has all the attention, all the adoration, all the cult like following, all everything. She is gonna make players in the WNBA millionaires if they let her. But they're so consumed with being mad and jealous and petty. They will do anything that they can to try to thwart or stop the momentum that is Caitlin Clark. They will foul her dirty. They will commit flagrant fouls. They will undercut her. They will chop at her face. They'll do whatever they got to do to try to stop this momentum. Because the only way you stop the momentum is by Caitlin Clark getting hurt. But what they're so tone deaf to is that that Caitlin Clark does get hurt. Please, God, don't let that happen. But if she was to get hurt because of one of these dirtbag intentional flagrant fouls that she's been receiving the entirety of the season, the numbers are there. There's been 30 flagrant fouls in the WNBA this year. 30. Five of them are on Caitlin Clark. Chicago alone has committed four of those five. They are trying to take her out. They make a point of it. And then they celebrate it on their bench. They celebrate it. But the reality is all these old head viejitas can't stand the fact that this white girl is better than them. She will make them millionaires, but she's better than them. And they hate that thought. If it had been, if Caitlyn were a black woman, they would not hate it. But because she's a white girl, they absolutely hate it. So when people say it's not racism, yeah, it is. It is. 
There's no other explanation for sitting here saying that she's not good. I've heard players in the WNBA say she or read or, and heard she's not that good. Are you watching? Are you blind? How many how many games did you score 30 points a game in in your college career? In your WNBA career. And this is coming from players who've never scored 30 points a game in their lives. Never scored 30 a game in their lives. And you're going to sit here and tell me she's not that good? Never had 10 assists a game in their lives, but she's not that good? Never made a pass like she makes, but she's not that good? Child, please. So let me show you. Let, let me show you something, man. Cheryl Swoops is the winner of not one, not two, but three, three WNBA MVPs. Cheryl Swoops is 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 one of the best players in the history of the WNBA. What do you think Cheryl Swoops's career numbers are? What do you think? Your thoughts. Take a wild guess. I'm not going to tell you till you guess. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, here you go. Cheryl Soup's career numbers 15 points per game, 4.9 rebounds, 3.2 assists, 43.6% field goal shooting, 31.6% from three. 82.5% from the free throw line. E field goal percentage, I, don't even, I, don't even, I guess it's effect, effective field goal percentage. This statistic adjusts for the fact that a three-point field goal is worth, more, worth one more point than a two-point field goal. Her effective field goal percentage is 46.8. Her PER is 23.3. That's for her career. Her win share for her career, I guess, is 56.1. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I, that, that one doesn't matter to me. Right now, right, right now, remember, those are her career numbers. Right now, Caitlin Clark, let's compare these two. I'm going to get my different screens so I can easily go back and forth. Right now, Caitlin Clark is averaging 18.7 points per game. That's 3.7 more than Cheryl Soups did for her career. 5.6 rebounds, that's 0. 0.8, 0. 0.7 more rebounds per game. Um, and 8.4 assists, which is 5.2 assists more than Cheryl Swoops. Shoots 42.4% from the field, which is a little bit worse than Cheryl Swoops. 34.1% from three, which is better than Cheryl Swoops. 89.7% from the free throw line, better than Cheryl Swoops. 53.1 effective field goal percentage. Better than Cheryl Soup's 18.9 PER. 2.7 win share. Obviously, she has a lot of career left to go. Let me tell you. Her rookie season is better than, than Cheryl Soup's entire career. Her rookie, her rookie, rookie season is better than Cheryl Soup's career. But I'll give, I'll, but I'm going to. Remove the career thing because obviously, as you get older, you don't play as well, you don't do as much. The last three years of Cheryl Swoop's career, she averaged eight. Uh, what she averaged 7.7, 7.18.2. 7 but let's take a look at it from this way this right here is one of Cheryl Swoop's MVP seasons. She has three, this is one of them, and actually, this is. Probably her second best one. I'm just looking at the numbers comparatively. Uh, similar. They're, sim they're, they're similar in nature. This is her best. This is one of her MVP seasons. 32 games. That's when they played 32 games in WNBA. 33. So Caitlin Clark averaged more points, rebounds, assists, less steals, more blocks, a little bit lower on field goal percentage. Higher in three-point percentage, higher free throw percentage, higher effective field percentage. She literally, she literally, 
He's having a better year this year as a rookie than Cheryl Swoops did when she won MVP. Think about that. This is an MVP season in the WNBA in 2000, 2002. 2002. This is the 2002 MVP season. I want to see where Houston went in the playoffs that particular year because they didn't win the championship after their first four seasons. The Sparks were the champs. Cheryl Swoops was the MVP. Houston was 24 and 8. They lost in the semi they lost in the semifinals to the Utah Stars. So they choked. If you want to call it that, they choked. Because they were the favorites. They were the home team and they lost that series 2-1. So they lost the series. That's the that's 2002. The Sparks end up winning the championship. It is what it is. Let's go look at her. Let the one season, one season. That, Kate, that Cheryl Seuss had a better year than Caitlin Clark is having right now was her MVP season in 2000. Now, remember who was on her team in 2000. She was playing with Tina Thompson and Cynthia Cooper. This was the fourth championship that the Houston Comets won in their four, in their four, their, their four straight titles to win you know, to start the, the W, the history of the WNBA. They won the first four titles in the history of the WNBA, and then a few years later, they didn't. Even, a few years later, the Houston Comets don't even exist anymore, right? But they were twenty-seven and five. They finished second behind the Sparks. They actually won their series over the Sacramento Monarchs, and then they played the Sparks, and they beat the Sparks in two, and then they beat the Liberty in two. Back then, when it was best of three for all these series. So this particular season, Cheryl Swoops averaged 20.7 points per game. She shot 50.6%, which is obviously very good. She shot 37.4 from three. The three-point percentage for me doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything for me because realistically, Caitlin Clark is shooting 28-footers. Back when this three-point line in 2000, was the was what what is a high school three point shot? I'm pretty sure the 2000 three point line in the WNBA was a high school three pointer, so it's a much closer shot, it's an easier shot. So shooting 37.4 percent from a high school three does nothing for me. In fact, let's check tech, when the the when did the three point line move back? And if it was further, it may have been. A little bit further. Because mm -mm -mm. right now, I mean, I think the three-point line is like 20, 22 feet for the WNBA. Um, whatever. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to have this pulled up. But I know that it was a much. It's closer than it is right now. Um, so I'm not going to compare a three-point shooter who's kissing the line, who's typically wide open from that area to someone who's being double teamed 26 feet from the basket, which is what Caitlin Clark is pretty much every game, every time she shoots. Not all, not every time, but most situations. But this was her best year. She shot 82% uh, from the line, 6.3 rebounds, 3.8 assists, 2.8 steals. Um, 54.1 effective field goal percentage, which is actually just one point higher right now than Caitlin Clark this year. 53.7 from two, 37.4. Caitlin Clark right now shoots from two point range, 56.1%. So this was the this was the best season of Cheryl Swoops's career. The best season of Cheryl Swoops's career is the only season what you could you could actually say that she had better statistical numbers across the board than Caitlin Clark is having in her rookie season. 
because her other MVP year was 18.6 points per game, 44.7% shooting, 36% from three, uh, the 47.4 effective field goal percentage, 85% from the line, 3.6 rebounds per game, 4.3 assists, two steals, 0.8 blocks. Kayla Clark had a better year than that right now. So two of the three MVP years for Cheryl Swoops are worse than Caitlin Clark's rookie year. She's fucking pissed. She hates that this girl's better than her as a rookie. And she knows that she's better than her as a rookie. She's jealous of her as a rookie. So all she keeps on doing is talking down upon her. To the point where she sends a, she released her own tweet. I mean, I'm sorry, her own direct message to Caitlin Clark after she made up all that bullshit about her in February saying that she was 25, took 40 shots a game, and all that nonsense, and, and um, had an extra year to, for, for her stats, to which made them illegitimate. But she, she apologizes via direct message, but all she's done since then is continue to dent. And Caitlin Clark was very gracious in it, in her response. Classy. Cheryl Swoops has a problem. She might need to go to a doctor. She needs a therapist. But at the end of the day, there's one reason that she fucking can't stand Caitlin Clark. And it's because she goddamn well knows that Caitlin Clark is better than her. She's better than her. Period. And she knows it. And it pisses her off. It pisses her off. That white girl. I played with a bunch of white girls in high school. Blah, 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 blah. They weren't better than me. So it didn't bother me. But this white girl is better than me. And she's the only white girl who's better than me in the history of the WNBA, in my opinion, in her probably in her opinion. She probably thinks she's better than Breonna Stewart. She probably thinks she's better than Diana Taurasi. She probably thinks she's better than Sue Bird. All the other white girls, white women that have played in the WNBA or what have you. But this particular white girl is better than her at 22. At 22, she's better than Cheryl Swoops was at 25, at 26, at 27. The only year that Cheryl Soups had that was better than Caitlin Clark's was her 2000 season while she's playing next to two Hall of Famers, Cynthia Cooper and Tina Thompson on a loaded Houston Comets team that won the championship. Caitlin Clark's playing with who? A second-year Aaliyah Boston who's still trying to figure it out, and Kelsey Mitchell who is turning into a star playing next to Caitlin Clark, but until this point was just simply someone who put the ball in the hole and could not play with other people or make them at all any better. Last night alone, we saw Kelsey, yesterday alone, we saw Kelsey Mitchell set people up, caught a long bounce pass from Caitlin Clark behind back for a layup to somebody. I forgot who she laid, who she, she passed it to. But that is what we're, Kelsey Mitchell has adjusted her game as this season has gone on. Kelsey Mitchell's not sitting here. You're not sitting here saying that Kelsey Mitchell's a Hall of Famer yet. Those women were Hall of Famers in their four, in Cheryl Swoops' fourth year. They were the best team in the league, and it wasn't close for four years. That was her best season. And Caitlin Clark, in her first season, is better than Cheryl Swoops is for the duration of her career. You can bet your ass. That one MVP season she got that has better stats than these numbers up here. Caitlin Clark will have better numbers than that next year. Mark it down. You heard it here first. Caitlin Clark will average over 21 a game. More rebounds, more assists, better field goal shooting, better three-point shooting, better, better, better. I mean, I don't know if she could be better than she is at 90% from the line, but pretty much better across the board. And I guess we'll have to listen to the pooper swooper cry some more. But that's all I got. What are your thoughts on my assessment on why she can't stand her? Why she refuses to acknowledge her? Why she refuses to give her praise? Why do you think? I think it's because she flat out knows that Caitlin Clark is flat better than her. And she fucking can't stand it. Leave, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Like this video. Drop a comment. And ring that bell. We're getting closer to 4,000. Help us get there. We appreciate you. Love you, man. Come on now.